was inspired. Now I'm sad and tired. After all, I've tried for three years. Seems like ninety. Why then am I scared to finish what I started? What you started? I didn't start it. This is Steve Balsamo. Uh, thank you, Steve, for agreeing to uh, to talk to me about your your faith and your your spiritual life. You're welcome. You're absolutely welcome. It's so, yeah. The first I heard of you, of course, was uh, because of Jesus Christ Superstar. Uh, some years ago now. It was about yeah half a lifetime ago. I was yeah. about 25. So yeah. it was a it's a long time ago. But yeah. it's it's it was such a a big and important thing in my life, and I, yeah, I'm interested to talk to you about about it. That'll be great. And uh, I know you now through our work uh, with interfaith and bringing people through Peace Mala, particularly um, of different faiths, to to speak with each other, to share uh, faith. Uh, how did you get involved with with Pam and Peace Mala? Well, I love. I love Pam Evans, who's, who started Peace Mala 20 years ago. I think she's a fantastic energy, fantastic person. And the work she does, I think, is fantastic in bringing together people of different faiths that wouldn't necessarily sit across the table and have a chat. So for me, I think, um, being more spiritually oriented than religious, shall we say, um, and enjoying aspects of different faiths, it really resonates with me, your work really resonates. And getting people to see the similarities in their spiritual um, journeys rather than differences is, is really important to me. And, and then of course the music aspect, and that's how we met with Pam. She's, she's very musically oriented, she's a singer herself. and So yeah, I've, I've just really enjoyed the work and we're going to be producing a CD of some songs that we've all been involved with uh, to try and raise a few quid for, for the Peace Mile. So yeah, so that's how I got, I got in touch with Pam because I've just admired her work over the years and, and just love what she's about. Yeah. Uh, now Pam will be singing on the, on the album as well as will you? Yeah, we've, well, Pam's um, done a, a Buddhist chant mm. which uh, you've just been playing some didgeridoo on mm. which is just beautiful. So yeah, so I'm, I'm really excited about it. And, and some songs that you've written as well. Yeah, a couple of songs I've written that are, qu that are quite spiritual, I think. Uh, it's funny, because I used to be in a band called The Stories, and one of my favorite stories of The Stories is um, a manager called John Brand, who used to look after the stereophonics, was very interested in look after, looking after The Stories. And he took our music out to Nashville, and we were a kind of a country-ish harmony band, a little bit like The Eagles and Crosby, Stills and Nash yeah. and that sort of thing, but with a with a Swansea twist, really. <laughs> but um, he came back and said, yeah, people loved it, and said, oh, we really love this Christian Christian band. Mm. Because the songs, we, we aren't Christian at all. And I love that. I thought that was mm. very, that was lovely, because the messages we were, we were singing about were kind of uplifting and spiritual and, and, and generally really positive. Um, but some of the boys just weren't into that at all. <laughs> <laughs> so... But it was one of my favourites. Um, that wasn't the reason the band broke up? Was no, it, it wasn't. Anyway. It wasn't the reason the band broke up. That was Glad the to hear that. That's funny. We're actually going to get, it looks like we're going to get together for a for a sit down and a, and a drink and a meal soon, That's which great. is the first time in a long time. Yeah. So there's well, a lot I, of, yeah. I know the music of the stories. Of course, you know. Beautiful music. One of the, thank you. Yeah, that, yeah, so, but, you know, personally, I think as, as I'm getting older, and you know, 
moving towards the yawning jaws of death, shall we say. <laughs> I think, <laughs> I think... Um, Nicely put, Steve. It's not mine, I, I stole it, <laughs> okay. but, but I love it. Um, yeah. But the idea that, you know, is, is, there, is there something else? Are we alone? What happens when we go? I'm very interested in a, in a, in a writer called Stephen Jenkinson, who is a Canadian. Uh, he's, he came from palliative care. He was, he was on the board of various palliative care organizations in North America. And he wrote a book called Die, Die Wise. Hmm. And there was a, um, a beautiful documentary made about him called Grief Walker. And his take is that basically the West is death phobic. Mm. And if we don't start thinking about our own death, because funnily enough, we're all going to go, mm. then we, we, we aren't fully present in life with, with both feet. And that really struck a chord. And, and, and again, his big thing is when we're in the bloom of life, to really start considering it. Mm. So I've, I've been to see him talk a few times, and, and he's also part of a, a musical thing called Nights of Grief and Mystery. And I urge you and, and people who, who watch you and listen to check him out. It's just one of the most profoundly beautiful ways of engaging with spirit and where we are and who we are and where we're going, possibly. Where is he from, Steve? He's from Canada. Yeah. Uh, somewhere, I, I think just outside Toronto. Mm -hmm. But he's got a thing called Orphan Wisdom. Mm -hmm. I think that's the, the website, Orphan Wisdom. He's great. So reading, reading him and, and as I'm getting older, I'm definitely feeling drawn back to the church actually. Mm. Um, I've, and I think why I like Pam so much is that uh, getting to know different faiths and, and the way that, that they kind of react and the, the ideas and the philosophies behind mm. their, uh, the different religions. I've always enjoyed kind of taking different aspects from different sure. religious practices. Shamanism has been a big thing in my life. I, I studied with a woman called Jill Purse for a long time. So shamanism has played a kind of a big role in my life. I'm very interested in, in that, um, that expression of spirituality, if you like. And I came to it after playing um, Jesus in Superstar, which was a profound experience in itself, as you can imagine. Um, I was aware that sometimes the voices of the cast and, our, and my voice could could do certain things to people. Now, I, now it was within a framework of a kitsch 1970s <laughs> rock musical, but of course the subject matter was so poignant and so archetypal. You know that that uh, that's understand. I understand that. However, I was very aware of when I sang certain notes in a certain way, people would start crying or people would react in a certain way. And I was very interested in, in finding out what that is. And there's a whole science behind that. But just after I played in, in that role, um, I came across a woman called Jill Purse, and she is a vo voice teacher. She teaches Mongolian uh, chant, throat singing. It's called, it's, it's a facsimile of Humi singing from, um, Tibet and Mongolia and I was really interested in learning that technique but what transpired from just going for, for a weekend of trying to learn how to, um, how, to, how to sing this beautiful ancient technique became you know probably a 10-year in investigation and conversation with with Jill's work which was profound which is profound and moving and, and deeply spiritual um, and 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 then through the voice, you know, especially which is which is my instrument, I learned many aspects of myself and who I was and who I am and who I'm becoming. And as I get older, I'm, and I and I'm listening to my voice and my voice changing. It's almost like giving me my old ancient vocal maps, which I learned through Jill's work, is giving me a map back to myself. It's a very weird uh, idea, but. As I'm getting older and I'm listening to how I'm changing and my voice is changing, I'm aware of everything else changing and nothing stays the same. So it's been, so I think my, vo my voice is one of my biggest teachers without sounding too grandiose or, or, or glib. I think it's, it's become something that, I've, that I rely on to kind of point the way, if you like.
Is music itself spiritual for you? I think absolutely. I think music is 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 deeply spiritual, and I've had some experiences over the years singing that have definitely brought me closer to something, if you want to call it God or the, or the divine. Or um, I've been lucky to to been able to sing in certain beautiful places and halls, and I also believe that places will contain the the literal ghosts of the descendants mm. and the ancestors and descendants so I think that kind of psychogeography I'm very aware of as well and mm. certain places are designed to to open us up I think mm. um, I've sung in certain cathedrals and, and churches and the, the geometry and the sacred geometry <coughs> is part of us really, we, it's part of our sacred geometric makeup. So having a little awareness of that and then a, a big awareness of my voice, I've, I've been able to kind of um, use it, if you like, to to get myself into a place of of deep connection mm. with, with, with place, the sense of place with myself and then the divine. So I've been, I've been and I think, if I'm honest, even through all the kind of pop music and the, the rock and roll that I've done, I think I've been moving towards that anyway. And I think as I get older, I think I'm, I'm going to be moving towards that, mm. using my voice in a way that, that's not about, hey, look at me, mm. and I a good singer, because, it's, you know, that's fun and great, serves the ego and all of that. Mm. But I think when I... Again, all of its ego to a certain extent, but when I've been witness to when I've been singing on myself by myself or with with a group of people and seeing the reaction that can have on a, in a spiritual uh, sense, I'm very interested in exploring to see what see what the potential of that could be. Mm. You, you speak about the ego, and earlier you were talking about the influence of different faiths on you and it, it seems to me that when we get underneath the surface of faith spirituality seems to expose that ego to us yeah. in a way that for people from a western environment like you and me though you clearly have a very Celtic like consciousness of your ancestry and, and so on um, but we've been brought up in this very materialistic environment which bolsters ego so mm -hmm. f when our egos become exposed to our spiritual practice as we we meet the Christ in us or mm -hmm. we meet God we meet the divine uh, it's very painful isn't it have you have you it, it found is. that painful it, it is and I think to perform is has to have a an ego base it has to because to to overcome nerves and and shyness and whatever which which I you know I am a um, I was a shy kid and you know so to overcome all of that you've got to have a sense of some sort of there's got to be some sort of ego involved but you're absolutely right I think when it comes down to the um, to the nitty-gritty and and singing for me even when I was in a rock and roll band trying to be you know a pretty boy on top of the pops, you know, and that, and I, and I, I was lucky enough to do that. Mm. But, <laughs> but that's all great and fun, and you know, it can earn you a few quid if that's your, if that's your thing. But going, for example, to West Ken at Long Barrow, near uh, um, uh, Avery Henge, is a beautiful ancient burial site, and having a little sing song in there exposed my ego and, and kind of dissolved it in a strange way because and this sounds fanciful and hippie and all the rest of it but I was aware of all of the ancestors and it almost woke them up and I almost <laughs> felt and of course this fee again feeds into ego a little bit of course it does but I was aware of Oh my God! There's there's much more to this than meets the eye, right? There's much more to this, especially with music and singing, and connecting 
with the, the land, <clears throat> with myself and with the old ones. So that, that was the moment for me when, when I thought, okay, this, this is more than just trying to be Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. Although Bruce yeah. Springsteen has a deep sense of spirituality yes. to his songs, yeah. I believe. But, yeah. Well, you've uh, described very well the reason I played the didgeridoo, I think. <laughs> so, um, so where... I sense that um, religious labels don't mean much to you, but your spirituality is clearly deep as deep. Um, so, yeah, where does religion come into it all for you? It's it's interesting. I went. I've been I've been to church a lot in my life in various different churches. I've never felt quite at home in any of them. Mm. And then, ironically, ended up playing Jesus, which was mm. <laughs> again, you know, such a profound experience. And having and I was 26 at the time. In my full, I want to be a rock star tilt. So all of, the, again, that was a dissolving of the ego, being met. Because we had a lot of religious people, um, Christians within the caste. And I used to sit with them and they talked about, because um, they used to have prayer meetings and stuff during, during the run. And I was very interested in that and interested in learning about scripture. Obviously read the Bible for playing the part and was obviously very moved deeply. And, and and then being crucified 400 times mm. over the year was was profound, you know. And I've talked to friends about it who have spiritual leanings, both Christians and and other kind of faiths, and and it, it was almost like a burning up of karma from a Buddhist sense. It was almost like I had to experience these deaths over and over again, and be and have people witness the death in a in a kind of Jungian archetypal way for, for some sort of was some sort of progression of my journey through, if, you know, many lifetimes. If you want to go to a, a Buddhist way or whatever. Mm. So none of that was lost on me, and, and that began that like began my my inquiry and conversation with it. But I think, you know, and this is I think there's a lot of control within organized religions that that obviously with the rising kind of secular thinking these days it, it shows that it's that, that it's not kind of fitting in some way but I think there's a yearning for a connection to the to spirit or the divine I think and as secularism kind of is becoming um, the norm mm. I think that loss of connection with the earth or with with this beautiful world mm. and and I think but what I think is happening is that because there's a rise in people's need to help preserve the world with climate change and the rest of it I think that will almost become possibly a a, a peg to hang some sort of so I think there's almost going to be a move towards that as almost being a quasi-religious thing. Now, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. So I think, and personally, I think, I'm moving back towards the church. I think I'm moving back towards a, a, a religious structure of the church. It's been coming the last few years, I, I, you know, and I don't know what that is or what that means, really. But I'm going to kind of just walk with it and see what it is. Mm -hmm. Having had a, a look at a lot of different um, religions, if you like, or different spiritual, walked on different spiritual paths, I think I'm, I'm going back to, through a, you know, a Christian door. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's weird even saying it, and, I, and it might be my age or as I'm getting old, as I said, I, I'm not quite sure. So. But I'm keeping open to the possibility. Yeah. But there's, the, you know, the divine or God or the great spirit or whatever plays a, a very deep, important part in my life and always has done since I was a kid. So. 
You're sitting under an olive tree now, yeah. uh, as Jesus of Nazareth would have done many times, and the olive tree is a symbol of healing and of um, faith and of prayer for Middle Eastern people, and um, and in other parts of Europe, of course, as, as well. Um, is there a... You're speaking about something that sounds to me like an exploration of vocation, what is it you want me to do, God, kind of thing happening with you. Um, I do think of it like that, man, yeah. I must be honest. I yeah. do think of it. Yeah. And, you know, sorry, I, I, I do it's think okay. that I've been put in certain situations to, to see exactly that, to, to see how I'd react in that. I really do. I do think that. It's necessary, of course, as you say, to open to to the divine, to open to what is, to open to the calling in, in us. So, do you have a way of, of praying, um, a, a spiritual practice, or is it more ad hoc? Uh? I, interestingly, it's been kind of ad hoc. I do, um, um, I like walking in nature. I, I find that very meditative and prayer-like. I'm very into the idea of pilgrimage. I like going to places with an intention. Um, I'm going to go. I've never been to Cold the Island, hmm. so that's going to be. I want to take a little pilgrimage out there. Yeah. Um, I read something the other day about prayer. I've got a friend. A friend of mine is is from a branch of Christadelphians, and we have philosophical conversations all the time, and theological conversations all the time. And there was an invitation to pray uh, every day, 10 minutes. So I've started doing that. Mm. And, I, and what it looks like for me is, is, and, and I'm going to, because of my conversations with James, is, is kind of frame it in a, in, a, in a religious context rather than a shamanic one or a, or a, a pagan one or a Celtic, mm. old Celtic tradition. So it is a little bit of scripture and, and seeing what's what. So, I'll, so I'm going to do that for a, because it was like an invitation to do it for, for you know, 10 minutes a day for a couple of months. So I've started to do that. So I'll see where that leads, you know. Yeah. But but I go, I'm, I love a place in, Pen, I love Pen Clouds. I love the Gawa. I love South Wales. Of course we've got the Gawa pilgrimage now. Have you have you been on that yet? I haven't yet. So uh, give me a shout when I'm, you're ready. I'm ready to come <laughs> on that. But I go to Herman Chapel in, in Pen Clouds. Oh, yeah. And I love sitting there. And I took my little boy recently and and said, I think I'm gonna, I think I wanna be here when I'm, when I'm done. And he was like, jeez, dad, what the hell? <laughs> but um, I find it so beautiful, that place, and yeah. so meditative and... It's above the marsh, for those of you who don't know, we're talking about Gower, North Gower, and uh, Herman is a chapel on a hill overlooking the marsh. The roof is off it now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's uh, But there's a, a, a graveyard there and overlooking the most amazing view of, uh, of the marsh all the way from Pen Clouds right out into yeah. the ocean. It looks over Crofty, which is another one of my favourite places, yeah. and then out towards the estuary and out to the ocean. It's just wonderful. So I go there and I go and sit in the hill, and that just that area for me, I've been going there since I was about... Since, since I was not really young, I think about 16 or 17, when I was in college, my mate drove down there once. We met Andrew from when, we, when I was in um, Gosine in college, and he said, and we, used, he said it was the kind of creepy place, and and when I went there, I was like, dude, this ain't creepy. This is, mm. this is amazing. So I've gone there ever since, yeah. um, re very regularly. And uh, of course, yeah. Gower is full of ancient ruins as well, Clan Ellen, for example, and uh, St Peter's down in the woods next to Caswell, where. You can place. find yourself in some amazing spots for praying, yeah. I'd love to come on that pilgrimage with you. Welcome. Yeah. yeah. Let me know. Yeah. I'm ready. Well, it's it's ongoing. Uh, it began last year, um, and it's ongoing, but we'll make a time to, to walk it. Brilliant. Yeah. Maybe we can film it and... Good idea. And we'll talk about it. Yeah. Like the weatherman walking, the yeah. religious man walking. That's a good idea. <laughs> walking with Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Steve, it's been wonderful Thank talking you. to you. Thank you, Father Tim. So this is, um, Father Tim's asked me to do a little bit of uh, the overtone or the facsimile of the Whom he's singing that I learned with Jill Purse. 